Okie Alrighty. Dokie. Hello. Welcome to the PSBS. I am the main host for this week. Cody is out for the week. Well, really the weekend. Um, so I am going to be uh, fitting in the hosting duties for this week. But um, I'm your host, Andrew Arenas Double Is. I'm here with my co-host. EJ Spun61, also known as Emmett Watkins Jr. Well, actually, that's my real name. Ah, it's kind of obvious at this point. Hi! Uh, it's okay. <laughs> um, man, Emmett, it's been a while since we talked, and that always seems to be the case whenever you're on. <laughs> but um, I don't new, know, new like, usually when this uh, pops up within the week, you know, I'm kind of like, oh, not that I have to, like, oh, man, it's coming, but... Yeah, just generally Thursdays are pretty pretty busy days for me. I got four classes, you know. Um, oh, things yeah. get pretty loaded and stacked. So then when like this comes along, I'm like, okay, once this is done, the day is done. <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, hopefully everything's been going good. Everything's been going good. Everything's been going great, man. Uh, just a lot of work from actual work and work from actual school. And um, I'm actually trying to switch up jobs, maybe get something that'll let me out a little bit earlier, maybe pay a little better. Because late nights are not healthy for a college student who has college work to take care of when he gets home. So, um, yeah, thing, I, I applied to Think Geek. I don't know if you've ever heard of one of those stories. Yes, we have. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I think Cody has too. But, yeah, everyone yeah. knows Think Geek. Yeah, everyone knows the website, but they got, like, actual stores. So I applied to one of those. So maybe that'll happen. Who knows? I got an interview in less than 24 hours. That is interesting. Wow. All right. But best of luck to you on that. I mean – Hell, yeah. you already have previous job experience. At least that's a huge. That's already like a huge. Oh yeah, that like that's what right was there. hurting me getting into the job I have now. But I've been there two years, so now I'm pretty oh, golden. Oh, two years. Yeah, you got it. you got it. Oh yes, yes I do. I think the previous <laughs> job experience will definitely help. That's interesting. I think Geek uh, has stores and stuff. Yeah, I mean they figured out how to broaden their audience. I guess they just. I mean they got bought by GameSpot or GameStop, I should say. So mm-hmm. I guess they're just using their method of, you know, brick and mortar stores to complement their online sales. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. How's the weather been around in uh, Georgia? <laughs> Bipolar AF. Yeah, it's yeah, especially around the East Coast, it's been uh, quite uh, topsy turvy. It's been a roller coaster. Yeah, like you'll you'll wake up and the sun's blaring on you and you're like, Jesus Christ, let me take off my jacket. And then about like 5 p.m. or 6 p.m., the wind blows and you're like, oh my God, my nipples are going to fall off and shatter when they hit the ground. I especially <laughs> hate it when I need to dress up like really warm in the morning and then it's like really warm like towards the afternoon area. It's just... <sighs> it's really oh yeah, it's the worst. It, it, it's been a conundrum. Yeah. As soon as November comes, hopefully it'll at least be consistent in its coldness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, a lot's been going on in this week of uh, the PlayStation world. Um, you know, as people know, the show uh, specifically delves into the world of PlayStation. And, and all the BS uh, surrounding. <laughs> I know, like, big developments have been coming up in other uh, forms, especially, like, with Nintendo and Microsoft. But, um, yeah, here but we, we won't switch to that subject. <laughs> no, because actually quite a bit happened this week in the realm of PlayStation um, and its software and hardware that we can talk about um, this week. So we'll kick it right off with something that I'm incredibly excited about. And Square Enix had a slew of uh, announcements today that um, Final Fantasy XV finally went gold. Um, this is a big one. Like, finally it's done. Uh, it's kind of remarkable Ooh. how both The Last Guardian and Final Fantasy XV went gold in the same week. I know. Two isn't legends that, ending. Isn't that crazy? Who would have thought? It's like two Bigfoots just dropped dead. <laughs> yeah. But we'll see. I'm very optimistic about uh, Final Fantasy XV. I'm definitely going to pick it up when the time comes because it's at, it comes at a really good time because like it's around um, when the semester ends. So I'm really excited to um, delve into Final Fantasy XV. Even if the demo wasn't you know, the best received demo mm. in the world. I mean, yeah, still is just a demo at the end of the day. Yeah, it's just a demo, so then we'll see how the full game is. Looks gorgeous. Um, oh, yeah, that's undeniable. Yeah, so I'm really excited about that. Um, definitely not a fan- Final Fantasy that I'm just going to buy because of the hype. Like, I'm actually really excited to check it out. I'm, like, thir- I'm like genuinely excited, not just to buy it just because. So um, we'll see it's that. But then, also, we had a, a couple of... Uh, Kingdom Hearts announcements. No announcements on Kingdom Hearts 3's whereabouts, unfortunately, but um, we got um, Kingdom Hearts, like, the whole collection 
of Kingdom Hearts. Both 1.5 yeah. and 2.5 are going to head to PlayStation 4, which is awesome because 1.5 was never on PlayStation 4. It was always on PS3. Um, I don't recall if it was on 360 um, for, or, or um, Xbox I, One. Part of me, I want to say no, but I don't know for sure. But um, but yeah, this is fantastic that 1.5 is coming to PlayStation 4. Yeah. Um, 2. Point, um, well, the other collection, well, really 2.8. Which is the yeah the later half collection. I mean, there's 1.5 and 2.5, um, but um, that's what the whole thing is going to be called. Uh, so 2.5 is going to hit uh, stores uh, January 24th. So that's going to be a uh, 2.5, and then the whole collection will come out March 28th of 2017. Oh, nice. And they're so, also getting what 1080p 60 frames per second treatment too. So that's you know even if you played them, you might want to go back and check it out in higher def. It made me want to listen to Vice's soundtrack. I played both games back in the day, finished them. Um, not like to the bone, but like I finished them quite good. Um, man, those are fantastic games. Really go back to my childhood when I played those games. Um, and I, I love telling people that like are hard, die hard into Disney, but they don't know of this specifically and it just blows their mind whenever i tell them about kingdom hearts granted you know get over the final fantasy slash anime uh hump but it's, See, it's all fantastic that's the hump i still have a problem getting over because i'm one of those die hard well maybe not die hard but i'm a big disney fan yeah. and then every time i'm like oh kingdom hearts but yeah, there's like this too. this melodramatic anime slant and I'm yeah. like, i yeah. can't I, I just can't get over that hump yeah, because it's especially prevalent, especially in two point and oh, and Kingdom Hearts two rather than Kingdom Hearts one. So, um, I mean, but but this new stuff is at the forefront, really. Yeah, I I I'd hope so. I mean, that's what they advertise on the boxes and such. But I just I don't know because like even the character you're playing as, and they have a whole bunch of fantasy <laughs> Final Fantasy esque characters yes. thrown yeah. in. Well, I mean, yeah, you got Final Fantasy characters in there. Yeah, yeah so. I don't know. Maybe one day. I mean, now it's even easier to get into now with this remaster. But oh, it's gonna be a lot of gameplay right there. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I know. And that that's even to be honest. Nowadays, that's even more terrifying. I barely have enough time to def- to beat the games I have. Yeah. I still haven't beaten Mafia Three. Oh yeah, Mafia Three. Yeah, we had a question about Mafia Three. We couldn't really give any opinions on it. I mean, do you enjoy the game? Oh yeah, I love it. It's uh well, is this just my soapbox to talk about the game right now or? Well, I mean, you, you just like a quick little thing. I mean, well, I'm like the thing that struck me about Mafia okay. Three, like it looked like a game that I would kind of like because like it gave me resemblance of La Noir like a tad, but um, hmm. just about like how the game goes about its story and whatnot. But even though they are different yeah. storytelling wise, because La Noir doesn't go back to like the present day or whatever. Um, yeah, it doesn't jump back and forth. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah Eleanor doesn't do that. Um, but I don't know. Just, just technical things really got me when I was uh, taking a look at the game. I was just like, oh man. But certain elements of the game do seem strong. But I don't know. It just didn't seem like it all came together really. I mean, the huge thing about Mafia Three, it's uh, it depends on what you're looking for. It depends on how much you're willing to overlook certain problems to get a great story. Because um, uh, other people are saying this, I'm not the only one saying this, but this is probably one of the greatest stories I've experienced in a video game. Mm-hmm. Um, not just because, because I'm like, I'm maybe 33% through it, maybe closer to halfway, but um, yeah, just the characterization they have going on. This is this is writing reminiscent of like real like drama films. Like this is this is some really good writing, um, mm-hmm. and they're treating and it's in the 60s and everything, so you know, racism ahoy. But uh, oh, yeah. they don't. Not only do they not shy away with it, they make racism a game mechanic. It's really impressive, actually. Like you know, you go into different neighborhoods, and they'll. If you go into a nice white neighborhood, the cops will be there in like four seconds flat. But if you're just hanging out in the doldrums with the rest of the blacks, then the cops might not even come. Like you'll hear oh, it wow. on the radio. You'll hear it on the radio thing, and they'll be like, "Uh, yeah, we got a hit and run in the in the slums. Uh, if anyone's around there, feel free to go check it out." And then they just hang up, and then no one comes half the time. So it's like, oh, it's crazy that they're doing it to that level. But um, I do agree there there are bugs that there haven't been many bugs that like halt any progress for me. But it's been a lot of graphical glitches. Yeah, I've, and then like I took a look at like how the sky looked. I'm just like, oh man. 
And the, yeah, the sky, the lighting in this game is weird. I, I wouldn't say it's absolutely broken, like people like uh, Colin Moriarty over that kind of funny said. But uh, mm-hmm. it's 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 a little bit wonky. I will give it that. But I am just so engrossed in the story, and I just want to know what happens to all these characters that I'm overlooking quite a bit. And uh, even the gunplay is fun um, when it works. Uh, sometimes there are glitches that won't really get you killed, but it'll just you know be a little frustrating, like when you try and blind fire around the corner. But there's you don't have a completely like the best third person shooter ever made is probably Max Payne three. It is oh, not Max, Max Payne three. I know it's it's a fantastic game, oh, I love but that it's game. not when it comes to cover based shooting. It is not. It doesn't get anywhere near that standard of being like complete control in all directions of wherever you're aiming at all times. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it gets finicky if you're trying to aim in a weird angle while on a wall of cover. Um, but other than that, the game the game is really fun and like just sneaking around, stabbing people, and just stealing their money while you you know stab a guy's neck in a sex den is really cool. And they don't pull any punches, which I appreciate. And uh, I'm definitely gonna beat it. But it it is one of those games where if you're looking for a fun open world game rather than an engrossing story, an engrossing story that is not in any other game, you're gonna be disappointed. Yeah, I think for that alone, you know, I I would want to get into that. Um, I will want to play Mafia 3 when the time comes, just to see how it is. Um, yeah. yeah, it's just some of the technical stuff. And then I remember seeing uh, videos on YouTube that garnered a lot of attention of uh, comparing like, the other Mafia games to Mafia 3 and like how uh, feature-rich those seem to be compared to Mafia 3 because, I don't know, it yeah. seems like Mafia 3 might be a little lacking in terms of feature set. I mean, that is that is one of the problems with Mafia 3 because yeah. they, they did their darndest to try and make Mafia 3 an actual game. Uh, cause Mafia, Mafia 1, I didn't know too much about, but it seems like Mafia 2 and 3 both shared, or Mafia 1 and 2 both shared this, where it's mainly about the story and the world is just there. There's mm-hmm. not much to do there. So it seems like what they did with Mafia 3 is make the gunplay worth the shit and make them have interwoven systems in the gameplay. Like you can sneak around or you can go guns blazing and you can, you know, get all these, mo- get all the money from all these, uh, different rackets and all these collectibles they really made it pretty deep but it seems like they sacrificed the ability to like in mafia 2 you could just get out of your car open up the hood and fix your car and then close the hood or you can go in the back of the trunk open up the trunk and like you know interact with you could interact with damn near everything in that game you can't do that in mafia 3 because they tried to make an actual an actual gameplay system that was uh, compelling rather than just saying, oh, look at this world, look how pretty it is by making everything interactable. Like, what, what, you can, you can't turn on a sink in Mafia 3, but, you know, at least there's a gameplay loop there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, it's just interesting that it's a game that can, comes from Take Two, and a lot of people, you know, grew frustration that, you know, it's not a GTA or anything like that. But it's hard to be a game like GTA, you know. Not every game oh, yeah. can be that, um, where you have an infinite budget. Um, Mafia 3 went through, like, various stages of development. I mean, um, really, this game was only worked on for, I think, a couple years. And it was from Hangar 33, so that's, like, uh, from some uh, Hangar Luca- 13. ex-LucasArts devs that used to work yeah. at LucasArts. I mean, from what so. I heard, they made, like, Hangar 13 made an entire team for this game. Yeah. Uh, they started with the ex LucasArts people, but then they got developers from all types of uh, open world and third person shooter games from mm-hmm. all over the industry. So, I, I just off of that alone, I was really hyped for this game. And yeah, it falls flat on a lot of stuff, but the story is definitely delivering. Cool. Well, I'm excited to definitely check that out when, uh, yeah. when the time comes. Pre- preferably. Uh... Uh, Christmas break, so I'm excited. Yeah, I say that. I say when it goes on sale, maybe around forty bucks is a nice sweet spot for this game. But uh, it's definitely worth it at any price for me. But I just feel like forty bucks is more reasonable. Well, it's good that you know, especially games that resonate. I mean, there's some games that I even find kind of like some people find subpar to people. I mean, that's why I like Ellie Noir because like even though it was critically acclaimed at the time, I don't know too many people that really like that game. So, but I I grew to like love Ellie Noir. Like I yeah. really do love that game a whole lot. Um, despite its ending, which I won't spoil, even though that game is like five years old, but um, yeah, I wasn't a fan of the game's ending, but uh, as most game know. endings are, yeah, Rockstar doesn't. Well, and Rockstar lately hasn't. I don't know really how to end their game. I mean, Red Dead has Red a Dead. fantastic ending, top ten endings in any yeah. game. But GTA Five ending, I wasn't too fond of. Uh, yeah, Max Payne 3's was fine. 
Um, I liked it. That whole game was like just a failure compilation, and then it ended. Well, I, I it was a. I liked the game. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it because I almost did just now. But yeah, I liked the ending of Max Payne Three. Oh, Max Payne Three is such a badass game. God, that, only, that's what they should do after Red Dead. Oh my God, we should oh, just do that. We had this some like, uh, ramblings about um, last week uh, mm-hmm. about Red Dead Two. Um, aside from everything, like speculation of the game aside. No one has really uh, pointed this out, and I pointed this out last week on the PSBS. That um, what's the likeliness of Red Dead being Red Dead Two being first person, just like GTA Five on Golden Ten? See, that's the thing with GTA Five. They you can do that, yeah. You you can do that in GTA Five, and it makes sense. It's a more contemporary setting. But if I'm thinking about the weapons, like if I'm thinking about how I played Red Dead Redemption One. Mm. All of those weapons were very much like shoot, reload, shoot, reload, shoot, reload. I wonder if that type of gameplay will adapt oh, very right. well to a first-person point of view. And plus, I, I feel like that was more of a novelty type mode. Um, even if they do have a first-person mode, it's probably going to be like it's just going to be an option. They probably won't start you out there because they want you to see the beautiful character model that they spent all this time working on. Yeah, I mean, it was just speculation because, you know, I, they added it as a feature in GTA V, and I know Red Dead is, I mean, even though it's an open world like GTA, you know, you have, like, a lasso. I wonder how a lasso would look doing a first person. Um, hmm. yeah, it's just it's just speculation. I mean, I, I didn't, uh, no one really brought it up. I, I was just kind of thinking because, like, you know, you never know if Red Dead could go first person. But, you know, it would, yeah, exactly. It wouldn't be something a forefront. The forefront thing would be third person, obviously. It's just, uh, I'm curious if... Uh, you know, maybe they would um, do it later. Yeah, um, I feel like it, it makes sense, but, you know, I, I, I couldn't tell you a reason why it wouldn't be there, but, you know, right. there's no reason to take it out. It seems like it's part of the Rockstar engine now, so why not include it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you have that first-person elements, like, in Rage, and Red Dead 2 runs off a um, um, an updated engine on of Rage. So, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure if you found out that, um, especially from last week, you talked about also that um, this trailer ran on a on a standard PS4. Oh, um, it didn't, not it didn't stay in the beginning, but um, it indeed runs on a standard PlayStation 4, not a pro uh, PlayStation 4, um, just a standard PlayStation 4. And that it is built um, on the standard PlayStation 4 in mind. Lord have mercy. So God help us all. <laughs> yeah, so um, that's a thing of note. So... Um, yeah, it's quite interesting that this uh, little partnership with Rockstar and uh, Sony—it's been prevalent ever since like 2014, really, when they they had the announcement of GTA on PS4 at the yeah. press conference. That was like, whoa! Like they're showing like GTA um, current gen first on PlayStation 4. That's kind of a big deal. Oh yeah, definitely. Because generally, you have these trailers of GTA that just like run off, you know, just whatever. But yeah, the fact that you know you're seeing these games first, like on PlayStations, is mm-hmm. like, kind of a big and deal. You, and you'll likely get a console bundle with Red Dead Two and everything. So. Oh yeah, yeah. I would, I would hope, yeah, there would be a Red Dead console. Um, haven't really had GTA consoles. Maybe there was one for GTA Four back in the day. Well, they had oh, wait, a GTA well, Five GTA bundle, 5 one, right? Yeah, they had a GTA Five like PS3 bundle, but I don't think. Oh wait, yeah, they, the console did they have did. like a money logo or something on it. Or no, I, that was the headset. Oh, yeah, the headset had it. So, yeah, I think the console just came with the game. But, man, I'd kill for a Red Dead Special Edition console. Oh, my oh, God. That looks so cool. I would imagine that it would look along the lines of, like, what the Gears 4 Xbox One oh, S looks like. Dude, it's just bright red. Oh, God, take me now. <laughs> yeah, that would be, be fantastic, dude. Um, I, I would imagine that it's the current PS4 right now, the Slim. So, uh, not really sure. But speaking of hardware and PlayStation Pro and all that, um, this is an interesting uh, bit here that uh, Titanfall 2 comes out this week. Um, I believe it's already out, well, in our time right now, It'll, even when this posts, it's already out now. It is 12 um, a.m. right now, so it is out in, my, yeah, ter- in our territory. <laughs> it is out. But this is an interesting tidbit about Titanfall 2 that um, it natively supports uh, 4K. Uh, pro- it has Pro support on the disc. Um, unlike so many other... Uh, titles that you know have been announced for pro that they're already out or like going to get updates later uh titanfall 2 uh, might be the first uh playstation 4 game to have playstation pro support on the disc yeah. um 
Yeah, so when they were asked about it, they were just like, um, simply the support is on the disk. But um, they did clarify that it is not native 4K, as that would be a lot of processing power. Um, yeah, as expected at this point. Yeah, but Timefall 2, um, shaping up really good with the press and all that, so I'll be interested to see how it does um, with the community and what people really think of it uh, as time goes on. But yeah, Timefall 2 looks fantastic. Oh yeah, the game looks great. I was uh I was really hyped for it playing the beta and everything. Um I, I, I will admit I got I feel guilty now because like, you know, Battlefield One and Titanfall Two both came out and they both, you know, are amazing on all counts. But I, I just rested on my instincts and just pre ordered the next Call of Duty. So <laughs> Oh yeah, well, about Call of Duty. Ugh. Yeah. I mean yeah. everyone hates on that series, but like I played the beta and I had it still felt really fun to me, so <sighs> It, it's it. I'll, we can talk about Call of Duty later, but um, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I I still do want. Yeah. I still do eventually want to go back and uh, actually purchase Titanfall two and Battlefield one because I had a lot of fun with those betas and I know those are great games. I just you know, I put my money one, yeah. very. I got to use my money selectively. <laughs> yeah, because like after Call of Duty in that week, that's pretty much it until like you know, until like Last Guardian and like. Final yeah. Fantasy Fifteen, really. I mean, and like Last Guardian, I'm gonna wait and see anyway. So, um, and we got Dishonored Two on the 11th of November. Oh um, yeah, jeez, everything. We'll, yeah, I'll talk about more about Bethesda and Dishonored later, but um, well, I don't know. Short. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna give a short thing about Call of Duty because I was talking about it last week. I, I yeah, mean, I gotta appreciate that you gave me the beta code. So like ten times, like thank you. Because yeah, <laughs> I, I played it with my, with a good friend of mine, and um, I got like. Almost, I got to the highest, almost to the highest rank in the beta. Damn. And I just wasn't feeling this game multiplayer wise because yeah. Just, I mean, I got, I mean, a lot of like the pro Call of Duty players on YouTube that I watch and uh, Call of Duty commentators on YouTube are really not liking this game. Um, with me, especially its comparison, like I think it's the worst COD since uh, Ghosts. Everyone's and, saying that. Yeah, uh, I, I, I know because it gave me ghost vibes with Black Ops Three uh, thrown in, um, and Infinity Ward has really stated that they've taken a lot from Black Ops Three, and it just disappointed me because like it didn't really seem that this three-year development cycle for Infinity Ward has really done much to the series at all because. At you the just end of copied the day, from the game before. Yeah, it, you and... just copied from the game before, and like this jump to space hasn't didn't do shit. And so, like, there's really not that big of a deal to it. Like, the only, like, space stuff you're going to get is, like, in the single-player campaign. That's why I'm excited for, like, the single-player campaign to oh, see yeah. how the zombies is. Because, like, I'm like, well, if this multiplayer is shit, then this single there better be a damn good campaign in here. And the campaign has some ex-Naughty Dog folks on it, so it's yeah, going to be good. That's what exci- yeah, that excites me. And, like, I, Infinity Ward is known to make at least really good campaigns. That's the yeah. thing. Like, the Ghost, Ghost campaign, campaign was, was really too. good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, Ghost Campaign. And, um... The um, Modern Warfare Three, Modern Warfare Three's campaign was fine. Uh, what was it? I campaign? ooh, I love Modern. It, mm, I mean, I like I Modern Warfare Two's campaign. campaign, dude. Like once that comes remastered, and I play that campaign again. That's gonna hit me in the feels. Oh, um, don't get me started. A freaking um, the evolution mode or whatever, the alien mode in Ghost. That was oh, fantastic. Uh, yeah. Like, so like, I like everything in Ghost surrounding it, excluding the multiplayer. Like the multiplayer in Ghost was garbage. Um. And here in Infinite Warfare, it might very much well be too, because like, it just it just simply wasn't good. That and it's just weird, like how you evaluate like a Call of Duty game, because like you're, so much of your time is spent in the multiplayer. I mean, you can spend it in any of the three modes that you de- desire, but generally, a lot of people's time is going to be in the multiplayer. And it's just strange when like new reviews come where like. You know, you have two fantastic modes, but, like, the multiplayer is just so mediocre, at least in my opinion. Eh, I mean, here's the thing about multiplayer. Here's the thing about all the Infinity Ward multiplayers. (laughs) Their their method of making a Call of Duty multiplayer is just, let's let's add as much fun, ridiculous stuff for the players to do as we can. And it might be, it might seem unbalanced, but if everyone has crazy, ridiculous things that they can do... Then the, in their heads, then it should balance out. Yeah, same, exactly. Yeah, that's a really uh, interesting yeah. way to put it, and that's how you, other yeah, yeah people have put it too. That there's really no, it's just kind of chaotic. 
That's all it is. And that's why people are desiring to go back to that boots in the ground and all that, not having any of the wall running and jumping around and all this stuff. So I don't know. I mean, it's totally – it's one of those things where, like, if you go back to Modern Warfare 2, that is – a lot of people shot on that game at the time because, you know, you had your one-man army new tubes and quick scoping everything. But it that was the same philosophy. If you just make everyone super awesome, super powerful, then it kind of evens the ground for everyone. And they've kept that going with Modern Warfare 3. They kept it going with ghosts, with, you know, melting people with go- guns and ghosts and everything. And now they're keeping mm. that going to Infinite Warfare, but now there's, like, you get your rigs, and they have crazy abilities, and then you have all these random grenades that, like, you can throw on a wall, and then they crawl over to an enemy and then explode. Yeah, and God, they just the have... Rigs. Yeah, I don't know. They, they, they have rigs. so much random crap. Yeah. And, like, I, I still think it's fun, because I'm not, I'm not one of those, quote-unquote, Call of Duty peers who is like, oh, man, I, wanna, I want the game to be predictable so I can be good at it. I don't care if I'm good at it. I get my every every match. I get you know one or two moments where I'm like, oh, I just got three people in a row, and then I die again. But that's the adrenaline rush I'm looking for. So you know, I'm not going to be too critical about it. Yeah, that and that's the thing. You're not alone. I mean, there's this like the YouTube sphere can only be so big, and like talking about those kind of like critical points of like you know the people that want to get good at it, where it could be uh, quote unquote predictable, but. Um, I just don't know because that's not really what COD is. I mean, it used to be, you know, where you had the competitive COD scene where, you know, it was verified, you know, where it could be uh, competitive. And just the recent games haven't really, you know, tested to that really. And I don't Oh, know. yeah. I agree. Like, it, it, except for Black Ops 3 because Black Ops 3... I feel like that's the problem. You get Infinity Ward, they do their cr- more chaotic, crazy kind of multiplayer. Oh, yeah. and, in Bla- and in Black Ops 3, for me personally, felt like the complete opposite. It's a little more controlled. A little more. I, I feel like Black Ops 3 is the most like, here here are the rule set, here is the here's the gameplay loop. Like It was very cut and dry. Like I, I was playing Black Ops 3 for a good while, and at a certain point, I just realized like what I was going to be doing for the whole game. Like I realized it was going to be the same exact like th- there was little room for gameplay variation because all the aspects of the game were so how do i say this everything had a purpose and so there was no reason for me to go try and use a different specialist or a different weapon or anything because i wouldn't be good at that there was no like in infinite warfare when i was on the beta i was actually hitting the quick scopes pretty good with the sniper rifles and i was like bouncing around with lmgs and smgs and i actually had some variety in there because i felt like i could handle myself with any weapon and even with the rigs like i felt like a lot of those powers or abilities were you know pretty useful in a lot of situations but black ops 3 felt like everything had a specialized role and it just felt it's it, it felt soulless for some reason mm. um I, I didn't i couldn't put my finger on it but uh black ops 3 just like drove me away for a while so when i get infinite warfare and it's chaotic crazy and people fly up in the air after they die i mean that's kind of what i like about call of duty i like the ridiculous side about it yeah it's just that i mean i don't know we've had three games in a row of this now you know um advanced warfare i mean i don't even know about advanced warfare multiplayer that one was panned i think i love it people I feel like people remember it fondly now. People didn't like the fact that oh, I'm shooting a guy and he's right, he's straight up in the air instantly. Yeah, people didn't I don't like know, that. I remember type really of playing game. the multiplayer on that one at all. I think I completely omitted that one because um, I haven't prestige like in a Call of Duty game since uh, Modern Warfare Three. So yeah, I mean this this uh, beta for uh, Infinite Warfare was like the most COD multiplayer I played in nearly like two years. So, um, yeah, it's interesting going back to all of them. I'm not really too sure about um, uh, Advanced Warfare. It's interesting to see what maybe uh, Sledgehammer is going to work on next. Uh, some rumors that they're going to work on like a Vietnam game. But oh, I'd love that. I I, I see Infinite. I, I, not, oh, my God. They're so, so melding together. <laughs> you hear commentators talk about Call of Duty. You know, it's so many of them. Um, I don't know. I see Advanced Warfare 2. Um We'll see. I mean, I thought I was going to get Ghost 2 this year. Um, oh, God. Because of the way the story ended. Actually, yeah, I was kind of disappointed when I saw it was going to be Space instead of uh, Ghost. Yeah, because I like, I like the Ghost campaign. Like, I don't like the multiplayer whatsoever, but like, I just wanted to see where like it would go, but I don't know. It's a whole melding thing, but 
But anyways, we'll just, we'll just go into the other news items this week because yeah. there's still, it's still quite a bit. Um, we can talk about that. Uh, Watch Dogs 2 has gone gold also. Another, oh, yeah, uh, finally. Game that's gone gold. Um, so it's definitely set for its November 15th release. Uh, pretty excited about this one. Oh, yeah, that game's going to be... Uh, he's, I'm very excited for that game, especially being someone who... I own Watch Dogs 1. I think I played it for 30 minutes and just it bored me. So oh, yeah. I'm, I'm very excited because I, I like the I like the protagonist. He reminds me a lot of uh, <laughs> what's the what's the man's name? The, he was in Creed. Oh, uh, Michael B. Jordan. <laughs> yeah, he reminds me of a oh, lot so of he, Michael he, B. Jordan. He could be the live action one of Watch Dogs. Well, I mean, the Watch Dogs movie is going to be a thing, right? They already it, taught, well, they they better cast that kid. Yeah, I mean, Michael B. Jordan. He he's fantastic. Like even despite fa- some duds, Fantastic Four and all that, like he's a really he's a fantastic actor. Um. If like the Watch Dogs movie was to be based around you know Watch Dogs two, which would be more fun than Aiden Pierce. Um, oh, definitely. Michael B. Jordan would be a fantastic pick for this dude. Amen to that. Yeah, like he he's just like wide ranging. I'll talk more about video game movies in a second, but uh, yeah, I think Michael B. Jordan would be really good for this guy if uh, Ubisoft was to adapt this kind of story into uh, the Watch Dogs movie. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I'm sure the game will be good because everything I'm seeing as far as uh, the media talking about it, it just yeah. looks very good. Yeah, I, I mean, I have a, a certain level of doubt. I mean, I did take a look at like the the main initial, well, the main gameplay videos that came after the initial uh, reveal. And I don't know, they didn't do much for me. Like, there wasn't much flair to the world at all and, and to the gameplay itself, so... That kind of gave me a little bit of a disappointment. But I don't know. Now that the stuff that I'm seeing this month has been really enticing me a little bit more. Uh, getting, to, getting to look at the missions, which I really want to do. I don't really see myself really being out there in the world too much. I, I see myself going mission by mission. So, yeah, same. Because, um, you know, I want to get through this game. Um, <laughs> so we'll see. I'm definitely interested to check it out. Um, yeah. Got the PlayStation 4 exclusive content, which I know is annoying for the Xbox players, but... Um, get that, yeah. but we'll, we'll see how the game turns out. Um, hopefully, it's this Assassin's Creed situation, like we always talk about. I mean, this I'm everyone's saying this is going to be the Assassin's Creed two, two Watch Dogs one's Assassin's Creed one. So you know, if those types of improvements are made, then it's nothing but a good game there. Yeah. Um, we'll see. But speaking of the video game movies, I was talking about earlier. Well, one day the Watch Dogs movie will. Hopefully, come out if Assassin's Creed does well um, in but December. But before that, um, yeah. Um, but uh, Hollywood Reporter reported that uh, the Uncharted movie now has a new director. Um, um, after the likes of like David O. Russell and Seth Gordon and Neil Berger, they've all departed. They've all been attached to it at one point, but now we got uh, Sean Levy from the Night and Museum and uh, Stranger Things. Um, he's going to be helming uh, Uncharted, which is uh, quite interesting. Um, I know the news wasn't really um, really get people all that enthusiastic about it. I mean, some people like the Night of the Museum movies, some people don't. I mean, I me personally, I, don't, I only really like the first one. Um, yeah, I mean, they all it kind of got pointless at a certain point. Yeah, it did. Well, did you watch all three? Uh, I only watched one and two, and I think I saw part of three. Yeah, I watched like on TV. I watched or something. all three. The third one wasn't that bad, but the second one was like, eh, um, could really do without it. Yeah. Um, but um no I mean I'm enticed I'm enticed um you didn't see Stranger Things yet uh I it's on my queue it's okay it's, yeah one day once people maybe stop talking yeah, about it I barely um, got enough time to play games let alone watch an entire series of television granted this one's at least uh eight episodes so it's a little more controlled so you know it's not like a whole I just uh, need to do I just need to do the Atlanta thing and just actually watch one episode a day and just get through it that way yeah. Maybe well, I mean, yeah, case. I mean, at least in Lima, it's like under half an hour. Uh, Stranger Things episodes are around 15 minutes, about an hour. Mm-hmm. So basically, yeah. you have like a nine hour, I mean, an eight hour uh, thing. But okay. he uh, he directed like a couple episodes of Stranger Things, and I found his episodes to really stand out from the rest of the episodes because the rest of the episodes were just directed by the Duffer Brothers. So um, I really liked his, I really dug his episodes a lot. So. I think him working on Stranger Things definitely um, amped him up to, to do this. So I'm excited to see where um, he takes uh, Uncharted. Still have yet to get a cast on it, but... Um, all right. 
I know we can. I know we can get a whole rabbit hole of that, but we we do, <laughs> we do need to move on. But I, I will say very quickly yeah. about uh, Sean Levy. Yeah. Yes, mm-hmm. he did. He did direct uh, a couple episodes of Stranger Things, but yes. I'm looking. I'm looking at his catalog right now okay. about other things he's directed. Yes. And these are like yeah, yeah. PG mm-hmm. or PG thirteen comedies exclusively. Yeah, they're, they're like, kind of yeah family movies. They're not really anything. Yeah, so I I wonder just going off of that type of tone, like he's directed like Cheaper by the Dozen one and two, yeah. Just Married, Big Fat Liar, <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. It's like I mean I, some of these movies I actually like, but um, it seems like this is gonna be in tone not much of a like Uncharted four or even three. It sounds like it's gonna be more campy, maybe like a Uncharted two or even an Uncharted one. Oh yeah, I imagine that especially with this director choice, that the tone of it is especially with in line with his movies and what he's done so far, and especially with Stranger Things and then the other uh, things that you're talking about. That um, he could definitely work with that material, you know. Like um, we'll see. I mean, you know, I had even doubts back then of James Gunn and Guardians of the Galaxy and Peyton Reed for Ant Man and other um, films, hmm. you know, that you know came from directors that really haven't had much on their plate or had. Only like the comedy um, experience. Um, the I know it's all Marvel examples, but yeah, also uh, uh, the Russo brothers too with uh, Captain America and all that. So they've turned oh, yeah, out definitely. really fantastic. So you know, you never know here. Like this can really be his like breakout thing, and then hopefully it does well, and then maybe he can direct the yeah. the sequels, and if that were to be the case. So yeah, I mean, I'm he personally does have... like, really excited. Yeah, he does have some experience with like stuff like Date Night and Real Steel. I guess you know, I'll I'll just wait and see. He's done good things. He's done yeah, things some that make middle me of the road and but nothing like he, he the, none of none of the movies I'm seeing here look like they're awful. No, it's just none stuff of them that, have been like critically planned. So, yeah, man, some of them just have been middle of the road. Yes, uh, and uh, some of these things I'm like, is that Uncharted? <laughs> yeah. So that that's really the only concern here. I, I'm sure he'll once he looks at the source material, he'll treat it with he'll treat it with respect while putting yes, his own flair yeah. on it. And I'm that's sure. a guarantee thing here, man. Like I, I mean, others. I mean, I was having trouble like even listing other directors that can really take on this movie because I'd imagine that it had to come from an experienced director, not the the one indie film, and then this situation. Uh, I had to think that it had to be like a director that's been working at least for a while, especially with oh, this yeah. kind of movie. So, um, I- I'm pleased with the pick. I couldn't imagine really anyone else, at least at the moment, to do this that's not busy with other things right now or anything like that. So, um, you know, well, like in my perfect world, I would have picked Brad Bird, but um, oh so was done Mission Impossible, and like how he deals with like those kind of like characters. Brad Bird did uh, the Rush Hour trilogy, right? Uh, mm, don't Hold believe up. so. No, th- I mean the only live action films he's made was uh, Tomorrowland and Mission Impossible: Rogue Nation. Oh, Brad Bird. Okay, he's the man behind The Incredibles. Yeah, okay. and uh, Mission Impossible and, and ugh, Tomorrowland, but um, but at least he's coming back to animation with Incredibles too. Oh, I um, can't wait for that. Two yeah, years. Was- Two years, folks. Yeah, I know. That's going to be fantastic. All right. Um, Brett Ratner is the guy behind Rush Hour. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about Brett. Oh, whoops. I don't know if you missed. Yeah. Not Brett Ratner. <laughs> no, we don't want Brett Ratner. Dude, I, dude, if, if, if Uncharted movies are anything like Rush Hour, if, if that, if that movie ended up anything like Rush Hour, that would be a great A hit. I, I'd be down for that. Possibly. It, it depends on which Brett Ratner we're getting. <laughs> Just not the X-Men last stand Brett Ratner. Oh, God. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> but anyways, um, let's see what else. Um, so uh, Turtle Rock is ending uh, Evolve support um, on PC, and the free-to-play version um, will not come to PS4 or Xbox One. So basically, development, at least from Turtle Rock Studios on Evolve, is done. So um, yeah, it's rather unfortunate, um, you know. The game had came out last early last year, um, yeah. had its impact at first, but then kind of um, sank down significantly, which is unfortunate. Um, you know, I wasn't really much in the camp of really get, getting into Evolve at all, especially with its DLC practices and like yeah. generally how the game was just lacking features, at least in its initial release. So, um, yeah, it's just it, it, Cody played it quite a bit. Um, but, you know, it just goes to show about, you know, the amount of uh, online shooters that we have. And the, there's only so much time that you can dedicate to so many yeah. of these games. You got Battlefield 1. Well, now we got Battlefield 1, Call of Duty. Um, 
Overwatch, uh, well, Battleborn. <laughs> um, I, I mean, here the problem with all the the difference between all those shooters you're listing and uh, Evolve was that Evolve was just structurally set up to not have that much of a wide appeal. It, it was a asymmetrical multiplayer game, so you have to have someone being a monster, and you have to have four other people. You can't just jump in and fill any role. You have to plan it out a little bit more. So it required your friends to be there. And it just required all this setup to where something like a Call of Duty or a Battlefield or an Overwatch, I can just jump in and have a couple matches, and then after an hour, I have my fun and leave. But in, in uh, Evolve, you have to sit there and plan for a while. So I think that was the biggest problem mm-hmm. with that game. That you know, it it could it could, it was the greatest game. Like it got like a lot of nines and eights and stuff when it came out. Yeah, but, but the, that's not what the community was feeling, at least. I mean, around. forget what the, the community was feeling. It, it's more of a question of uh, people just would not play. No matter how good a game is, if you're not going to be able to get your four friends together or if you're just not in a good team every time you get on there, it's yeah, going to do mean, something anything. to the life uh, lifespan of the game. Exactly, yeah. And that's what had it so short-lived at that time when it came out, in the, in the year it came out. And, you know, they wanted to experiment. They had, like, the Titanfall, like, year two plan, stage two plan. And... Um, yeah, it just didn't work out. But it was interesting, like, um, there were some stats, like, you know, once uh, the Stage 2 came out on PC, the free-to-play model, um, it, the player base jumped up 20, like, almost 20,000%. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> so, um, you know, I mean, and I was optimistic about Evolve coming free-to-play on PlayStation 4. Um, I would have tried it out, but... Um, Same it doesn't here. seem like I will anymore. I mean, they've been working on, on Evolve stuff for five years. Oh so, God! Well, when did that game come out? Oh well, I guess came out last development. Year and, like you know, they were they were working then, on this one for a while. Remember geez. the preview cycle for it? Like, yeah, yeah it, it had a like a year long preview cycle. Yeah, it had a long preview cycle, and it got like a lot of hype. And I don't know, I wasn't really buying that hype even before it came out. Um, <laughs> like, I don't. They got some best games of the show or whatever, but you know, IGN he uh, featured it heavily on there uh, and GameSpot. But I don't know. I wasn't really buying it. I was just like, eh, it's whatever. But yeah, it's unfortunate. But I'm glad that Turtle Rock's finally going to be able to do something else. Like, Evolve didn't work out. Time for Left 4 Dead. <laughs> I mean, Left 4 Dead, or maybe, if not just straight up do Left 4 Dead, maybe take the structure of Left 4 Dead and maybe apply that a little bit more to the Evolve style. Mm-hmm. Maybe make it instead of just one monster, give you some more stuff to shoot rather than just the monster. Maybe, I don't know. They, they, they got some figuring out to do for their whole studio and direction. And hopefully they come out with another winner because that's a good team. Yeah, I know. Um, because I want... What was that guy's name from Left 4 Dead? Uh, the black guy? Coach? Lewis or Coach? Yeah, I think the Oh, Coach. Coach, my dude. Dude, my dad is Coach. I feel like I've said this on the show before, but yeah, my dad is Coach. <laughs> you, think, <laughs> like, you think your dad can be Coach from uh, Left 4 Dead for Halloween? Dead, he probably could pull it off because this dude, this dude, <laughs> this dude has been a football, a high school football coach for almost thirty years now. Wow. Slightly overweight, and on top, and on top of that, he he's like he was part of a fraternity in college, and he's all about it. And that fraternity's colors was yellow and yellow, well, gold and purple, which is the colors of this guy's shirt. So like, yeah, that's just he, he grew up to be coach. <laughs> coach is fantastic, dude. Like. And I love The Walking Dead. Oh, my God, Walking Dead. Um, <laughs> oh, God. I do uh, like The Walking Dead. Well, the, the Telltale series. I don't care for the show at all. Ooh, um, I'll fight you later about that. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I know. Um, I like Coach. It's fantastic. What's Coach the black girl game. name in uh, Walking Dead? Uh, I mean, no, in, oh, God. In, uh, Left 4 Dead. In, yeah, Left 4 Dead. Uh, Rochelle, I want to say. Rochelle. Shout out to Rochelle. She's aw- she's badass, dude. Amen. Rochelle, such did- a good series of games, but it's unfortunate on Valve's end to like greenlight Left 4 Dead three. And so, you know they can't count the three. They can't do. So. They can't count up the three. That's a, that's a thing. Um, but God, dude, if, uh, if, Left 4 Dead the pre sequel. <laughs> dude, Left 4 Dead. Oh, it's like a dream game. That's a dream game. Yeah, Those yeah. games resonated so well with me at that time, and so good. I think today that it would more than ever, you know, it would be a return to form for Turtle Rock and everything, and I think that it would go go really well. Um, 
maybe it's just on the topic of horror that um, Resident Evil 7, um, the pro support was shown off recently, and uh, that the game is 90% complete. So the game's on track. Um, nice. Thank God. Uh, you got a little tweet where, like, you had a 90% screen. You know, the Japanese love to tell their percentages of how close they are to uh, finishing games. Uh, so <laughs> we at least have That's that good. coming. Um, I'm excited for this one. Um, yeah. When this one comes out. Um, got the VR support in there. Um, so that should be interesting. Um, yeah. 4K support. Um, so yeah, so they were running Resident Evil 7 on a PS4 Pro, running a 4K. So... That's also interesting. Yeah. I remember seeing some gameplay of uh, combat for the first time, and it looks uh, more... It looks like, like you're aiming a gun and everything in first person and everything, but it looks like it's less... You're, it's not Resident Evil 6, not even Resident Evil 5. Hmm. Maybe Resident Evil 4, you are probably even more powerful in Resident Evil 4, but it was literally like maybe five seconds of gunplay, but it seemed like you're trying to buy yourself time to run away more. Rather than yeah, trying yeah. to do any real damage. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited. That was coming early next year. See where oh, it yeah. goes. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I'm excited to see. I'm I'm an RE fan at this point. I mean, I got four, five, and six on PS4. So yeah, it's fantastic that they put all of them on there, even despite the fourth one not having a platinum yeah. trophy on PlayStation Four. Mm. Yeah, that but is not too, happy, not too happy about that. But yeah. maybe you could replace that platinum trophy with the uh, with the Telltale Easy Telltale game. Yeah. They'd be like, you know what? That that's my Resident Evil 4 button. But speaking yeah. of Telltale. Yeah. Um Batman. Um Episode, the episode four. Yeah, episode four and five, they're all uh, on track to finish it by all by the end of this year. So episode four will release in November, and episode five will be in December. So I don't know how um, they do it. Heard really it's... good things about two episode two and three, so I know I, I do need to get back on uh, Batman the Telltale series when the time comes. Dude, I'm I'm slipping when it comes to Telltale games because I got because oh, yeah. I played uh, Walking Dead season one and two on PS3 and then I eventually got them both on PS4. So now I have to finish season one, play season two. I got the Michonne series, and then on top of that, from recommendations from people, I picked up the Wolf the Wolf Among Us a long time ago, oh, yeah. and I Fantastic. and I picked up. Tales from the Borderlands a long yes, time ago. Yes, yeah, it's so good. Tales and then, is fantastic. I know. And then on top of that, season three of The Walking Dead, the, the game is supposed to come out like November. So I don't know what I'm going to do. On oh, my um, no, that's December. Oh, December? Yeah, for Walking Dead oh. season three, the beginning. Yeah, I'm going to say December. Huh. Yeah, well, still not that disappointing. That I'm way out of school by that time, so I'll have time for it, thank God. Yeah, your little uh, two hours dedicated yeah. to... Uh, Clementine. I will make it happen, Captain. She's not going to get that walkie-talkie delivered anymore, is she? Uh, we'll see. From a from a certain someone in The Walking Dead. Winkity yeah. wink. Because wasn't he supposed to like? He gave. Her, didn't he? She like give him something to like send out or something. I don't remember. Oh shoot! Yeah, like in season one, right? Yeah, in season one, she had a little interaction Ooh. with him. Well, I I don't Toward think we end. have confirmation that. Ooh. Well, no one knows what character we're talking about. So if you don't watch the Walking mm. Dead TV show, well, I don't, I don't watch the TV show either. But <laughs> you know what happened? Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't know. There's no confirmation that the timeline in the game and the timeline in even the show or the comics are where they are compared to each other. Mm. Um, I guess we can only know seeing if we see characters from the comics and like their or state even of being or at, at least time. maybe mentioned. I don't know if they maybe come across uh, people. Well, that's the thing because I look, I have no authority to talk about the damn TV show because like I could care less about the Walking Dead TV show. Um, oh, <laughs> you poor soul. I mean, I don't blame you at this point. It, it's 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 something, it's, but it's ridiculous. man, I still it's like it. Show's ridiculous, but I, I just I could never get into the Walking Dead television show. It's just a. Like, it makes me wonder, because, like, the Telltale series is so different from the show, and just, like, the whole dynamic of it, you know, like, right? I mean, you have, like, it focuses on that group of people, while, like, the Walking Dead tel- uh, Telltale series, like, changes over time, even though it's focused, like, on Clementine, but, like, everyone dies, but people die in The Walking Dead, too, so. Yeah. Clementine's the Rick in the games. Like, she, <laughs> everyone's gone except her. Uh, but, I don't know, I just... And then... I am one of those people where I, in that camp where like a very small camp, I guess, minority camp of like, oh god, where like I I want to know what happened. 
<laughs> yeah, that's the re- that's why I'm still watching the Walking Dead show. Like I I know there's a lot of BS about how that show treats its fans and the whole oh here's a cliffhanger we'll see you in seven months. Yeah, and basically, then, you got the season six finale. Like, yeah, so yeah, you're gonna we get got your season, season, season seven this week, this coming exactly. week. Exactly, like that just. <laughs> Like they do cheap stuff like that all the time, but I just I've been watching these characters for seven years now. I'm way too invested. I have to know what happens to them. Yeah, and I don't know. Probably oh God, to like wait you like seven years, man. They're like invincible in the Walking Dead. Shit, they, dude, they are. And like Rick, everything Rick has been through, everything Carl has been through, everything. Um, I see. Like I don't even know these people. <laughs> they're the main character and his son. <laughs> Like, like how they, do they, they make it through all shit. this? It's it ain't easy being cheesy. <laughs> oh god! Man. I mean, I don't know. I, yeah. I recommend the show, but I it I don't recommend someone starting now. Like the show's only good if you've seen how they've changed. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. But uh, we'll talk about a couple more things here before the topic of the week. So then, hopefully, we don't go on too long for. Uh, <laughs> Some people, but we're doing re- we're doing really well on time. But um, these, these are like oh, quick tidbit things, not really anything to evaluate on. Oh, okay, cool, cool. PlayStation View was uh, coming to Android TVs. Whoopee! And um, <laughs> that, but the interesting tidbit here is that PC and Mac web support is coming soon. So hmm. now I can finally watch my HBO on a damn computer. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Which could be good. Um, I recently subscribed to PlayStation View because of the HBO package in there and um, hmm. enjoying it quite a bit. Um, but I really do wish I could view it online. So I'm um, very happy about this uh, announcement. Hallelujah. So, um, we'll see. A lot of people are enjoying uh, PlayStation View. Um, at least the ones that anecdotally that I've spoken to. Only like a couple of my friends on my friends list have it. But I don't know. Over time, it would save you a lot of money from basic from having cable so at least th- it all depends it's a whole thing but oh yeah indeed indeed but i enjoy playstation view quite a bit and i like having my hbo yeah it's definitely a compelling service mm-hmm. so i'm glad that's at least doing well as opposed to another uh streaming service that playstation has um play, uh, playstation no <laughs> <laughs> that's debatable i i wonder if that's actually doing bad or if we just never hear of the people who do use it well, not not really too many that I have known. Yeah, that's, um, that's a different can of worms. Let's see. Um, PlayStation VR is doing really well, um, and that um, is exceeding expectations, um, especially with GameStop, mm. and that their uh, demand for the headset remains high. So um, that's pleasant. Little into two weeks of VR, Cody has a PSVR headset, and um, he's really digging it so far. So. Um, Definitely a Christmas gift I'm looking forward to for this year. I gotta get excited for something for Christmas. So, uh, well, tell me how it is because I don't have four hundred dollars to drop on a on a headset. Yeah, that's a, a yeah, that's the thing about it. Like, would I want that or just kind of build on what I have and like just get a bunch of games, like regular games? Because like, I don't know. It's like the con- that's like the conundrum I have right now with me, like. Dude, with four hundred, you could get like 20, 20 great games on PS Four. That, that, that end up that you, at, at the end of the day, you would end up playing more than all the VR games probably combined if you even had them all. Because like exactly, you have to get the VR headset and then you got to get the games. Um, yeah, just not too sure about it yet. I mean, if I do want, because it doesn't sound too enticing, because I would only be able to play it for like that span of time at home, and then you know I leave back to school, so it's just like you know it's going to stay stationary in my in my house, and it's kind of a waste. Yeah. Um, like, don't get me wrong, I really I believe in it, and I want to get it, but it's just oh yeah, you know, me too. But logistics, it's just logistics, a I just thing. don't know if I can like do it. Um, like I feel like I would need my own plate. Well, I would move back. I'm moving back to San Diego after I graduate college. So like, oh, nice. that that really sounds enticing to like move back to San Diego, have my own room, and have a space for VR once I move back. But that's all the way until spring 2018. But I mean, Ooh. time moves fast, man. I mean, back in 2014, we were all like, oh, look how far 2016 is. But now we're in 2016. Um, <laughs> so 2018, 2018 is gonna yeah, 2018 is gonna approach. Um, I feel like faster than it will. So, 
Um, that sounds more enticing to me. Like have it like more relaxed and like the game, more games will be out and who knows a price drop maybe, but like a small one maybe in 2018. I don't, and I'm not suggesting like a hundred dollar mm. price drop, but maybe a price drop of something. Along with PSVR Pro. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, that's my little conundrum right now. Like, and I was thinking about it, like to have it like as a media viewer, but I don't know. I'm pretty content with like my TV yes. I have in my living room just to view content. Yeah. In. So like I'm not like I need it to like watch content really. And it's not like the highest resolution thing either. So it's not like I Yeah. I it's straight it. up like just a it's just a uh what is it called? It's just a luxury item. Like sure yeah, it it'll is. give you new ways to play and everything, but it's completely unnecessary in a lot of ways. So Yeah. What are you gonna do? I, it's just up until, you know, we get more software that really defines it because right now we we do have bits and pieces of that right now so sort of the arkham vr and all that but we don't have like any full-fledged you know we the games that we have now basically you know we don't have that yet this is like the forefront which is really exciting i want to be at the the front of that but at the same time it's like I'm only gonna be able to play this thing for a month and then i gotta move out of school back out to school and then it's like i don't have it and i'm gonna go have that vr withdrawal um, yeah. <laughs> so I, know. I don't know it's a whole thing but it's doing really well though that's a big thing of note so that's the vr news really of the week no really any, any other developments of vr has really come out in the past week really not that any that i have seen but um but yeah yeah now let's go into the main topic of the week um something Yippee. from bethesda <laughs> and and i have the um little blog post uh from it from Octo- uh, october 25th so i'll just kind of uh read it since it is quite short so uh, Bethesda okay. and game reviews. At Bethesda, we value media reviews. We read them. We watch them. We try to learn from them when they offer critique. And we understand their value to our players. Earlier this year, we released Doom. We sent out review copies to arrive the day before launch, which led to speculation about the quality of the game. Since then, Doom has emerged as a critical and commercial hit and is now one of the highest rated shooters of, of the past few years. With the, uh, with the upcoming launches of Skyrim Special Edition and Dishonored 2, we will continue our policy of sending media review copies one day before release. While we will continue to work with media, streamers, and YouTubers to support their coverage, both before and after release, we want everyone, including those in the media, to experience our games at the same time. Hmm. We, we also understand that some of you want to read reviews before you make a decision, and if that's the case, we encourage you to wait... If your hmm. favorite reviewers, for your favorite reviewers to share their thoughts. Skyrim Special Edition comes out October 28th. Dishonor uh, releases November 11th. So, uh, yeah, this was making the rounds quite a bit this week. Ma- mainly, like, the big talking point, um, at least in PlayStation and Xbox land this week. Um, so, yeah, what do you think about this uh, new policy? Even though a slowly emerging policy that they have been going at. Um, 2K, it seems like, has been doing this as well. Mafia yeah. 3. So, what do you think of this kind of policy of, um, you know, publishers handing out review copies really uh, kind of a little... Um, Just, you know, right at the last minute. Yeah, close. Uh, I mean... Yeah, okay, what do you well, have to garner from this? This is quite uh, divisive. On this. Yeah. Uh, well, first thing first thing I want to say is uh, I actually, uh, mm. once this thing got announced, I was looking at some YouTube videos and I follow a reviewer on YouTube... Um, he was talking about he's talked to some uh, he has friends in the industry and such. Um, he's heard that Bethesda is not the only um, publisher that is actually going to do this policy. Oh yeah. Um, he he has uh, he has information that says that two other publishers that he doesn't want to quite reveal yet because um, you know that'll probably break trust in you know in his He'll relationship. Get blacklisted. Well, maybe not blacklisted, but you know, <laughs> you don't want to break you don't want to break developer relationships by telling you know off the cuff stuff. But he's aware that there are two other publishers that might start resorting to something like this. Uh, ACG is his uh, name on YouTube. Yeah, and so yeah, it sounds like Two K, uh, the way they treated uh, Civilization Six recently and Mafia Three uh, a couple weeks back, um, giving those copies out very very close to the release date. Uh, it just this type of practice seems dangerous to me, um, especially Bethesda. Like you think about Bethesda games, a lot of those games are great, but if you get a situation where, because it seems like they've gotten themselves burned, because if you think back to when Fallout Four came out, 
Um, a lot of people had problems with Fallout 4. They were because there was so much hype about Fallout 4. It was Fallout 4 City, but as soon as it dropped, everyone was like, "Oh wait, this is a Bethesda game. There's glitches here. There's bugs here. I mean, it's a fun gameplay loop, but there are some problems here." Yeah, it's been- interesting that they pointed out specifically Doom when the beta for Doom wasn't received all that well. Yeah, the beta so, for like, Doom. Yeah, the beta for Doom. Yeah. Like, I, I believe the beta for Doom was panned. Like, people didn't like it. Yeah, I was one of the few people who did like it. Yeah, and yeah, that that There's game. A lot of people I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, that game only was you know well loved because of a single player that no one knew about until right up mm. to the release of the game. So I it's maybe like, what do you that's... do there when you play a beta of a game that with the multi yeah that's what's like infinite warfare but that's different though. that's a different situation but um at least for me because i wasn't yeah i mean I, I mean i can't blame them because if you look at it from bethesda's perspective uh they release early copies and put out an early review embargo for fallout 4 uh there are middling reviews sure the game ended up being pretty good but a lot of people had problems with it not just in glitches and bugs but it was a much more streamlined fallout in that it was more about Oh, go here and shoot things rather than, oh, here's your deep intricate quest with these uh, dialogue trees and multiple ways to solve it. It, it kind of it was kind of lacking in that way. Yeah, and Fallout so, Four definitely isn't like a well renowned. It's not you know. Yeah, people c- claim it's like in the middle ground to lower of the Fallout series, but you you take that when they give you all this leeway before the game comes out, and then you compare that to Doom, where they say nothing about it until they give out the copies the day before. And then everyone's like, oh my god, this game is the greatest thing. They actually pulled it off and making a relevant, fun, tra- faithful to the original Doom game. So it, it, using that type of data, you can see how they would come to this conclusion, but... Yeah, it's just... but why would, that, why, would peop- why would they let people have that mode of thinking then? Like, if that's okay, because... <laughs> what was it? Okay, so like, we sent out review copies to arrive the day before launch would lead to speculation about the quality of the game. So, like, for future games, they want people to think about that again? But, I mean, <laughs> so with this blog post here, that giving people that heads up, then maybe it's to alleviate that fear, but but even still, I mean, you got to have, like, some level of skepticism, right? Yeah, I mean... I mean so, basically, I, they want this, like, whole mode of thinking kind of to go away here with, like... Leading to speculation about the quality of the game. Yeah, do, people did have speculation about Doom's quality at the time. Even I did too, because as well as it presented itself at E3 with the single player, I thought the game was going to be like repetitive and not all that great. Oh, no. And then, um, I, I mean, I didn't really faith. state that, but at least on record, but uh, because, you know, we had the PSPS last year with the, the E3 report, but, um, you know, I wasn't like blown away by Doom when it first initially was revealed. And then, um, this multiplayer beta was panned, so it's like, you know, I wasn't, I was a little skeptical. Well, I didn't even end up winding up getting the game, but um, but now yeah. that I hear that it's fantastic and all that, I want to get into it one day, but I'm just not really sure what the mode of thinking that Bethesda's really aiming at this, because at the end of the day, this doesn't really benefit anyone but themselves. And, I mean, that is, yeah. that, that seems like it, the primary reason for it. I mean, there's yeah. no confirmed chatter or talk about this that no. confirms this theory, but this is all about control. Like, if you look at other forms of media, yeah, um, movies exactly. movies will have private screenings, like, weeks before the film actually comes out. And then, you know, they write their review, and the critics say whatever they're going to say, whether or not the movie's good. Um, video games is really one of the only mediums that has this very secretive, oh, we're not going to tell you about the game. And it, it, it kind of feels sleazy and underhanded, because um, we're also one of the most expensive me- mediums out there. Oh, so... Yeah. You, they get your 60 bucks because you've been, you know, pouring onto this hype train for the last 10 months or whatever. Or, year, your PR cycle or year. years, yeah. For or years, project, yeah, yeah, for like Final Fantasy and The Last yeah. Guardian and stuff. So you, you build up this hype train and then when push comes to shove and the game comes out, you don't give anyone the chance to say, hey, here's what the game actually is. Here it is in a in your face level and see if you want it or not. Instead, you're trying to get people to buy the promise of your game rather than what your game actually is, even yeah. if that promise is or is not what the game is. Cause you know, I mean the high profile thing this year, you know, was no man's sky, you know, that big lesson, you know, yeah. I would have thought that, you know, developers would have really taken a note at that. Um, yeah, and exactly. Even, I, I like, I appreciate yeah. that you compared the other mediums thing because um, we have, 
a large. I mean, granted, you can pre-order other forms of media too. I mean, you could pre-order books, at least electronically. Yeah, it's pre-order um, DVDs, pre-order and books, such. DVDs. But at least you already know what like the movie yeah, is. Yeah, the movie's yeah. been out for a while. Or, or the television show, or whatever. Or music, into. actually. Music, you can also pre-order, but you, yeah, you don't know if the album's gonna be shit. <laughs> um, yeah, true. But that's something to debate, depending what you're, what you listen to, and what you like. But, um, but games is in that so specific um, category where like you're able to do that, um, and um, that especially digitally, at least on the PlayStation Store, you can't get like refunds unless certain circumstances happen where like the game gets, gets delayed now. Actually, because, yeah, if you, if your game if the game gets delayed on PlayStation Store and you get it electronically, Sony will send you a refund. Well, if if the game gets delayed more, more than a month away from the month, original yeah. release date, which is nice. I mean, shouldn't have been implemented a long yeah. time ago. And then they'll give you that money. They'll they just give you store credit, and you can either pre-order it again or you know do what you want. Dude, it was and so then, funny how early in advance back in the day, how early you were able to pre-order Uncharted for it until dawn. Like you were Jesus able Church. to pre-order it like a few Two months and a half out years before it came out. Yeah, you were able to pre-order that a couple months out from the PlayStation 4's release. Jeez, you like you're getting you know, like, you're gonna get thing. that on Charter. You really want to get on Charter. And until dawn. turned out to be fantastic games, both of them. Thank God. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, but, I just uh, yeah, it's interesting that you draw that comparison there, especially with other forms of media, media with games, because you know we're such in that. Um, Different position. Um, Warner Brothers does some Warner Brothers games does some sle- pretty sleazy stuff too, especially with Shadow of Mordor with the the YouTube paying the YouTubers and all that. Uh, oh yeah, that was I was I was speculating when people speculated. I was at one of the people because I gave high praise to Shadow of Mordor, which is very strange that WB would do that considering that Shadow of Mordor is a fantastic game. Wink, wink. Yeah. Uh, well. I got, Legit. I got paid 190 for that one. <laughs> I mean, you can trust me, I'm not paid. But yeah, that game was legitimately great. So stop worrying about if people are going to think you're gay. Just make a game that you believe is great and put it out there. Because nine times out of ten, a developer knows if they're putting out a shit game, they know it's shit. They know because the problems. They have, like, they have even, focus testing, right? Exactly. And they have mock, mock reviews with, internally as well. So, like, even, even the guys who made Mafia 3, they probably knew that, yeah, that there were problems amazing. before that game came out. So, yeah. Because then, 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 they, then they had the patches for both console and then the, the frame rate patch on PC. Exactly. Yeah. I, I just, I just don't get, I don't get the rationale and their thinking and thinking yeah, it's, that. it's an interesting mode of thinking, especially from last generation, because I'm one of those people. I like the day one stuff. I like getting you know, pouncing on it right away. I mean, well, in recent years, not so much anymore because I can't really get the games day one as much as I'd like to anymore. But um, I was close to getting No Man's Sky, but my credit card declined. So, like, that's why I was not able to get No Man's Sky. And you dodged so, a fucking bullet. It did that, and I dodged a bullet, let me tell you, because, like, nothing was really – I didn't really know much of that game, and, like, I didn't really um, watch too much. But then once the thing lifted and once I saw it, I was like, oh, man. Like, I, I remember when I was watching YouTube videos because I was trying to fix my credit card or whatever, but then I was watching some videos, right? And I'm just like – my. I remember that night my jaw dropping <laughs> about, like, this is the game. I, I, mean, I was saying that on PSBS that the week the game came out. I mean, I was like, I was actually like stunned, like when I was watching it. It was a I mean, Jim I, Sterling's yeah. video I watched about because that was the first one that went up at least on my sub box about um, No Man's Sky, the retail release of No Man's Sky. And I watched this video and I was like, dude, Oh, oh, I had dear. known, I had known that game was gonna be like that forever because like I, I was listening to the kind of funny guys talk about it. And they've gone to like an event or two. Where yeah, they yeah. played like hours of the game, and they said it wasn't gonna be this crazy go anywhere, do anything, build anything type world. It was gonna be more of a Minecraft in space. <laughs> like yeah, this is unfortunate. We don't have we have, we just don't have a game like that. I mean, we can get as close to that as we want. GTA Star Minecraft Citizen might be the closest thing. It's just yeah, well, that's a whole other thing. But at least spe- talking specifically with Bethesda, and like um, yeah. this is definitely not going to like go away this is gonna 
spread on to other publishers. Well, at that. least for a while until, you know, unless people start talking <coughs> with their, start speaking with their wallets, uh, which, you know. That's right. Yeah. But unfortunately, that's not the case because our internet bubble, it's the thing that people need to read. Our internet bubble is only like so big, you know, yeah. that doesn't translate to like actual people out there like on the street playing, on the street, <laughs> on the street, the streets, man, people playing these games. Um, no, that like people that don't have Facebook or like Twitter accounts talking about it, you know, or you watching YouTube videos, like just people, you know, just that go about it casually, just you know. Uh, I just don't think that like I don't know if that'll affect pre-order numbers. Um, we'll ha we'll have to see um, how that translates. Um, but it is interesting because, like, but, you know, Bethesda does have a track record of at least putting de really good software out there most of the time. I mean, they had some faults, especially with Fallout 4 and uh, uh, the initial release of Elder Scrolls Online on PC. Oh, uh, yeah, that was... That, that was a pretty mm -hmm. big blunder. I mean, people need to remember how bad Elder Scrolls Online was on PC at its initial release. But thank goodness when it made the jump to PS4 and Xbox One free-to-play, seems like it's been doing really well, yeah. which is good. Yeah. Yeah, Thank they goodness. just got an update, too, that uh, changed a whole bunch of stuff, and everyone's liking that, too. So, you know, it's good to see that game has some legs. Because um, um, I'm not going to... I mean, Bethesda doesn't put out too many games a year. I mean, well, they like, got Skyrim not coming out soon all. and Dishonored. But next year, I mean... Bethesda puts out maybe three or four games a year. a year. Yeah. Because you got they, I think they released. I, I get they're treating it as a relaunch. So for uh, Elder Scrolls Online, yeah. they released the Tamriel One update, and then they also had you know Skyrim, as you already said, and then the Sonar Two is coming after that, and then I think they might have had like a Elder Scrolls inspired card game that like either launched this year or it's in beta or something. I'm not sure, but like they don't put out that much. They're not a huge publisher, so um, in the grand scheme of things, like this. This method of them saying they're going to wait to the last day to give out early copies, it's not going to affect that much of the gaming landscape. Um, you'll get, you know, the new Wolfenstein when that comes out. That'll be affected by this. Uh, whatever their new Elder Scroll, they're probably making an Elder Scrolls Six. Lord only knows what it is. And then, you know, whatever the next Fallout game is going to be. And then Prey, the new Prey that they announced, that's going to be under this thing. Um, but other than that, you know, you got plenty of other uh, publishers that, you know, they make their games and they have their own press cycles like EA and Activision. They had uh, events. They had events and flew people out to play hours and hours of Battlefield 1 and Titanfall 2 and then the upcoming Call of Duty. And then, you know, they're like I know people who uh, played Infinite Warfare already. They're writing their reviews and the embargo still isn't up for another couple of days. So, you know, it, it just depends on, you know, what what narrative do you want to paint do you want people do you want to show that air of confidence and saying we're so confident in our game we're going to let it out mm. early and let people tell you about it before well before it comes out or do you want to with this Bethesda thing it seems secretive that you know it's, it, it's, it seems like they lack confidence in the quality of their games where they're just holding everything to their chest until the last minute or it's just it's just a control thing. They they can say so much by not saying anything at all. Oh, so, yeah. So they can let their marketing speak for themselves. They can let you know whatever mm. preconceived hype is coming up for a game speaks for themselves rather than you know putting their money where their mouth is and saying, hey, this game is actually good, and you got a five day period to think about how good this game is from people who actually played it. Yeah. Wow, that's a that's a that's a really good point right there. But what about um maybe the last point that I'll get into? Yeah, um, yeah. Before we wrap this up, that um the wait and see approach with it, right? That they encouraged people also to for the wait and see. So what do you, what do you stand on that? Like, even though you brought up some points about that, just re what you just said, but uh, <laughs> that you know, should this day one culture just kind of just stop? I mean, but I mean, you can do yeah. whatever you want with your money. Um, yeah. But um, at the end of the day, I mean, I don't know. That's changing my mentality a little bit. If I should like be that day one person really anymore, like you know, once school ends and I'm able to like play games freely, I mean, that if I want to do the day one culture thing anymore. I mean, the whole day one culture, like number number one, do what you want with your money. Yes, but it is it is not a very good purchasing decision to 
buy something before you know what is entailed in it. That's just like in anything, not just games. So, I mean, I'll I'll be straight up. I pre-ordered I pre-ordered Mafia Three because uh, I knew that story was going to be excellent. But then I will be honest, I kind of got burned in the gameplay department. Sure, I enjoy it, but it's not like it's not this amazingly deep gameplay uh, loop that I thought it was going to be. Even though I am still having fun with it. Um, and the well, other problem counts. is, yeah, I mean that is what counts. And then you know you also got the problem with retailers pushing it on you. Uh, I pre-ordered Mafia Three in part because Best Buy gave me a ten dollars gift certificate for doing so, and then you know it comes with you know extra cars and weapons and stuff in the game. So there's plenty of incentives to pre-order, but it's up to just using your common common sense and just you know don't put money up for something before you know what you're buying. That's just that's just anything. That's just a smart thing to do. But if you if you are so confident in the game to go do that, um, that's kind of on you at that point. Like you should just put do all the math in your head. And yes, the marketing looks good. Yes, the uh, the incentives look good. Yes, I'll get a ten dollar gift certificate or whatever. But I don't know what this game is until it's in people's hands. So you got to use that at the end of the day. Dang, preaching. See, you basically speaking my words. This is fantastic. This is why we have this why I have you on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Reverend Emmett, get onto the pulpit. 100% <laughs> agree. At the end of the day, it doesn't really um, if, like benefit anyone, just Bethesda. <clears throat> so that's all it will at the end yeah. of the day. So, yeah, we'll kind of see how this uh, goes from. I mean, we're going to see how it goes, especially with yeah. uh, Dishonored 2. I mean, which looks good. And, yeah, uh, and Skyrim, Skyrim Master. Skyrim, and I mean, now. unless something's really wrong with it, which I doubt, but I mean, it should be fine. Um, but, I, mean, I mean, the Switch copies will come out uh, a day before. <laughs> if that's yeah. going to happen. It's not confirmed. Well, you better turn the Switch off that console and play it on a real system. <laughs> no. Oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm shit-talking this damn thing before it even comes out. Let me chill. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 let, me, let me take you to the freezer real quick. <laughs> take a little I'm trip. The, I'm the butler and Tomb Raider, I know. <laughs> um, but yeah. Man, so much this week. Yeah, um, big week. Big things popping. Little things stopping. Anything else that comes to mind that maybe you saw this week that maybe the people out there need to know? Nothing. Do you think I kind of covered the bases? Hopefully, there isn't like maybe one thing that I kind of overlooked where it's like, oh, dang it. I mean, if we're sticking, if you're sticking solely on games, I can't really think of anything else oh, yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. the um, PlayStation Realm, unfortunately. Yeah, but I mean, no, which is not an unfortunate. Look how much stuff was there to, this week. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff to talk about. It's not well. I will say real quick. Oh, um, oh. This isn't necessarily a news story, but I did want to mention uh, you got the sale of the dead going on. Oh, on right. PSN. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Point yeah, out. I just yeah, I just want to mention there because there's some really good games on there. Um, it's a two week event, so if you don't see something you were looking for, maybe wait till next week to see if it's on there. Um, just you know, Halloween and horror themed games. But this week you got um all of the remastered versions of uh, Dead Rising one, two, and Off the Record. Um, I actually picked up Off the Record, and I'm having a good time with that on PS4. Uh, all the Resident Evil four, five, and six remasters on PS4. Those are really good, and at 60 frames per second, those games are even better. Um, I'm one of those people who like 6, so, you know, deal with it. Um, and you got Outlast if you didn't get it on PlayStation Plus, and a whole bunch of other horror-themed games. Oh, and, uh, yeah, fantastic. Even some, even some Vita and PS3 stuff, so definitely go go on there and check it out. Uh, some really good games for some really good prices. Mm-hmm. Definitely and, look into yeah. the sales. Always look on the sales on PlayStation. Yeah, every I don't buy anything unless it's on sale. But I end up buying things too often because of that. Because there's a sale every other week. Exactly. It's killing me. You're killing me, Smalls. You're killing me. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else here. I guess that's about it. <laughs> Did he have that, like in a little black room? Like, I guess that's about it. But, um, oh man, Emmett. <laughs> also, R.A.P. Oh, Vine. Oh, oh, oh yeah, uh, <laughs> R.A.P. Vine. Um, I believe there's an app on Xbox, but PlayStation never had a Vine app. Oh, it's dead anyway. Remember when uh, Twitter rot. had an app on Xbox 360? Dude, I remember that. I remember the I Twitter saw that app on Vita. I saw conference, I think, like in 2008 or 2009. It was such a big deal, and no one cared. Oh, God. Twitter's a fun thing. It but yeah. Can be. <laughs> That's besides the point. 
Um, trying to think. Uh-oh. No, see, like I've been kind of wondering, yeah. but um, man, Evan, it's fantastic having you on. See, like now we're gonna end this like abruptly, but um, yeah, I hope I did a good job here. <laughs> but um, I, I kind of like did this, a great uh, job. This was really good, good session. Yeah. Oh yeah, fantastic. Um, but yeah, Emma, it was fantastic having you on this week. Um, maybe maybe you can be uh with us uh next week. Um, I'll try depending. to make it happen. Yeah. Um, if you want. Yeah. Uh, we'll, I mean, we'll like I said, it all it. it all depends on life. <laughs> life. The minutia. The final frontier. <laughs> Star Trek. I yeah, I was very sad that Star Trek got delayed for PSVR. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I heard about that. That is uh, unfortunate. But with that, this has been the PASBS. I am your host for this week, Andrew Arenas, with my co-host here. Emmett Watkins Jr., also known as EJ Spun61 on Twitter, YouTube, and everything. Everyone have a good week. Stay safe out there. Be careful. Make wise decisions. Oh, um, and vote. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, vote. Yeah, that's a good oh, God damn it. But yeah, vote for whoever you want. Not shaming. Yeah, no just, shaming. you know. Do what Both you want, because, you, you know, it's important, especially this year. Yeah, I believe, like, we were, wait, um, we would have another PSBS before the election. Yeah, we would. Oh, yeah. Well, um, you know, early voting is but stuff's open, early so voters. just get it in. That's right, yeah. We have get early voters. You, you might feel like, you know, what's the point? There's a fucking point. So don't complain about it afterwards unless you make your voice heard now. <laughs> exactly. At least get it over with. Right, then. Do what you can, wherever you're registered. Yeah, yeah. just... Get it over with. Yeah, I'm excited to vote. Yeah, November 8th is going to be fun. It's going to be a fun yeah. day. I mean, I'm, I'm probably going to mail it in because, you know. My... Regardless of what happens. I'm yeah, excited. regardless I'm of excited. what happens. Yeah, God exactly. Help us all. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, too. Um, my dad is in charge of uh, the security detail for the inauguration. Um, he's oh. in charge of the security detail in uh, uh, the Capitol building. That's, he's basically, that's pretty dope. Yeah, he's in charge of the whole thing. Like, in... Every week, like, he has to get different phones. So then, yeah. So would you say your dad has two phones, one for the plug two and one for the host? Phones. <laughs> <laughs> two phones. I knew you were going to. I love that song. One for the Set it up perfectly. Oh, um, man. No, he gets, like, different, like, BlackBerry, like, work phones. He has to, like, get new ones, like, all the time. Oh, wow. So that's interesting. Can't really say much about it. Um, but other than that, he's just in charge. Of, he's the head of security detail at uh, the Capitol building for the inauguration. Yeah, it's nice, gonna be a nice. shit ton of people that day, and they're gonna Sounds do the bothered. rehearsal. Oof. Well, we'll see how it turns out. But uh, with this is being the PSBS. Catch you guys next week. And Adios. Emmett, click. <laughs>